So Elon Omar was supposed to be the fresh new face of the Democrats. Instead, she's quickly frustrating her own party. And now liberal constituents may be planning to oust her at the very next opportunity. Elon Omar, a Somali-born immigrant who came to the United States in 1995, made headlines when she became one of the only two Muslims elected to the U.S. Congress. But what could have been a success story has changed into a bit of an embarrassment for the Democratic Party. The Minnesota representative angered Jewish Americans, traditionally a solid Democratic voting bloc, by making a series of tone-deaf comments that were viewed by many as anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. The House was forced to pass a resolution speaking out generally against bigoted language, but many leaders on both sides of the political aisle expressed frustration that Elon Omar hadn't seen to learn her lesson. But that lesson could possibly cost the representative her job. A report from The Hill suggests that Democrats in Minnesota are searching for an alternative candidate to take on Elon Omar in a primary challenge next November. Quote, some Minnesota Democrats, ahest at the controversial comments made by by Representative Elon Omar are taking initial steps to recruit a candidate to run against her in the next year's primary election, seeking to buck history in one of the nation's most progressive legislative districts. Several party leaders said they had discussions about finding a candidate to take on Elon Omar just two months into her first term in Congress. The 2020 election is still a ways off, but as we're seeing with presidential candidates making announcements, political parties are already gearing up for what will most certainly be a contentious political season. Oh, poor little Elon Omar. Not even two months into her term in Congress is her party already looking for replacements to get rid of her. And I think that really just goes to show you just how really bad she is at politics and political strategy. But that's not even the worst part of it right now. Her little butt buddy over there, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is also showing a lot of weakness in the polls. Recently, new data came out and polling came out suggesting that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is the most famous Democrat as of right now, but also she is the most unliked Democrat as of right now. Even by her own party, even by the same people who voted her into power are disliking her more and more and more. And you can understand why people who voted for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez might be having second thoughts. Because just to name the worst thing that she has done so far, besides making herself look like a complete fool, is that she lost her district and the state of New York 25,000 jobs. Do you remember that? I do. And I'm pretty sure the people who were burned by that still remember that and are still going to remember that coming up to 2020. And the Republicans and President Trump are going to play ads against Elon Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and they are going to run it into the ground. And even the Democrats know that there is no point in standing in front of a charging elephant. AOC and Elon Omar have done humongous damage to the Democratic Party. The first things first, you have Elon Omar coming out and making those anti-Semitic remarks, not even apologizing for them and doubling down on them in most cases. And then you have AOC and her retarded remarks. She lost her district and the state of New York 25,000 jobs. That is all Trump needs to run a vicious campaign against the Democratic Party. He's going to call the Democratic Party anti-Semitic, anti-Israeli. He's going to call the Democratic Party anti-jobs and a bunch of socialists idiots and those kind of talking points are going to stick to the Democrats and there is nothing more they can do about it and we're not even close to getting to 2020. So AOC and Elon Omar have a bunch of more wiggle room to make themselves look even worse. Now in the case of Elon Omar she's emboldened because her party stuck by her and her party did not condemn her for her remarks, her tweets, and her blatant anti-Semitism. They actually embrace it and Elon Omar's character doesn't help her whatsoever. She is not very charismatic. You hear her speak and it's just like she seems to have a superiority complex about herself. She talks as if she's talking down to the people she's talking to. And again, she's just not very charismatic. I honestly don't understand how she got elected in the first place. Now you see, the Democrats, they want to win 2020. 
they want to have some sort of a win in 2020 because they understand that they you know that they are not going to win the presidency. Trump is most likely certain to win his second term and the Democrats want to win. But Elon Omar, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, they are a stain on the Democratic Party just because of the crap that comes out of their mouth. These three women do not understand political strategy. They do not understand how politics work. You know, in the most literal sense, they're still wet behind the ears. But I think that Elon Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is doing the most damage to the Democratic Democratic Party. You see, because AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, makes the Democrats look bad in a financial and economic way because of her new Green Deal, her shutting out 25,000 jobs out of New York, and her socialist babblings. And then you have Elon Omar making the Democrats look bad on a moral standpoint, consistently tacking Jews and tacking Israel and all that other shenanigans. And just like I said before, you're going to have a lot of these minority groups are going to start leaving the Democratic Party at large. First, you had the walkaway movement, the hashtag walkaway movement, where Democrats of all races and ethnicities were starting to abandon the Democratic Party. And then you had more specifically, you know, what Candace Owens did, which started the black exodus from the Democratic Party, helped and campaigned by Kanye West. And then you had that Israeli Jewish model. I think she's Israeli. I, I don't know. Don't quote me on it. But she is calling for a Jewish exodus from the Democratic Party. That is three strikes against the Democrats in under one year. White women have already abandoned the Democratic Party, and we saw that in 2016. And that just leaves what group of people still are in favor of Democrats. You got it, illegal immigrants and Latinos. Even though a lot of Latino Americans have proven to be leaving the Democratic Party as well. The only difference is, you know, they don't have an official movement against their leaving the Democratic Party. Like, you know, hashtag walk away or, you know, black people leaving or Jewish people leaving or something like that specifically. And it just goes to show you just how much support the Democratic Party is losing. The Democratic Party is windling away. It's dying at this point. And AOC and Elon Omar are helping it put it in the grave even faster. And see, AOC and Elon Omar, they don't really care about the neoliberals of the party. They want to transform the Democratic Party into a Socialist Americans party or something crazy like that. That is what AOC, Bernie Sanders, Rashida Tlaib, and all these, you know, you know, new faces of the Democratic Party, even though Bernie Sanders isn't new, he's like a millennia old, but he's in favor of the destruction of the neoliberals and the destruction of the old ways of doing things as Democrats. And the American people, and again, a lot of Democrats and liberal voters have spoken out about this and their dislike and their disapproval of the way the party is headed of the way that the Democratic Party is doing business now. And I think, you know, with AOC and the help of Elon Omar, they are going to be the destruction of the Democratic Party. And the data and polls reflect that kind of action. Polls already show the Democrats weeping in support. It already shows people are disliking Elon Omar and especially AOC, even though to be fair, AOC is just loopy in the head and Elon Omar is actually, you know, anti-Semitic and very bigoted in her nature. And also the Democratic Party, despite what not even 20 years ago, was talking about the separation of church and state and how religion shouldn't matter in political sense, but yet they are praising this Somali Muslim woman for being one of the two first, you know, Muslim congressional representatives. It shouldn't matter if she's Muslim, Christian, Jewish, or not. Religion should have nothing to do with politics. But the issue with Elon Omar is that she brings her politics and mixes it up with her religion. This is a woman who was totally in favor of Sharia law. This is a woman who honestly dislikes the Jews because of her religious propaganda and the way she grew up. Do you honestly believe that Elon Omar didn't grow up in an anti-Semitic household? I'm pretty sure her parents consistently talked about the evils of Jews and the evils of Israel. I'm pretty sure she had friends who were also aligned with that kind of thinking. So in a sense, she brings in her own personal beliefs, her own personal religious beliefs, and entwines them with her political actions. Just look at her tweets. Just look at how she's behaved over the years. How this woman got elected to Congress in the first place is astounding, but then again, she was elected in Minnesota. And Minnesota has a lot of Scandinavians, and what we know of Scandinavians is that they are very... 
cucked, to say the least. It's honestly an absolute tragedy that she was elected to Congress in the first place. But thankfully, hopefully the Democrats do the right thing and boast her out of office before she continues down the road or if she gets, you know, a second term. Because the Democrats have given her the weapons and the ammunition to continue down her bigoted rhetoric and not calm it down one bit. Because they protected her 100%. So why would she ever stop her behavior? But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.